So just a little while ago, a small YouTuber named Mark Rober released this model, which is a 3D printed Nerf gun that he designed that uses compliant mechanisms. But in this video, we're gonna talk about why this is so special from a manufacturing standpoint and talk about how you would redesign it so it could be mass produced. So this Nerf gun, designed by Mark Rober and a team at BYU led by Larry Howell, who is a world expert in compliant mechanisms, is a really fantastic study in good design. Compliant mechanisms gives you all kinds of advantages. Number one, they have a lot fewer parts. Rather than having a lot of mechanisms and chicanery throughout the device, like a normal Nerf gun with springs and chambers and parts and pieces and screws, you have this one single part that is able to do the job of launching a projectile because you have designed all of that stuff into the part itself. And compliant mechanisms reduce the part count, therefore they reduce the manufacturing cost, but they're often very complex geometries, so they can't really be manufactured in many contexts. So like this Nerf gun right here could not be manufactured. Number one, it has a small groove along the outside where this cocking happens. That can't really be made with any other process other than 3D printing. And then of course, all of these fins that act as the springs inside of it can be made or can even be extruded. But since they're so thin, there's a real high probability for failure throughout the production process with most traditional processes. So this has to be made with 3D printing for this type of design even though it has a ton of benefits. This has fewer parts, so when it comes off of the machine line, it is finished. It can go into a box and go out to a customer. But how would you actually optimize this for it to be mass produced with printing? Because right now, there's a number of weird aspects about it that aren't really ideal if we wanted to make a 1,000, 10,000, or a million of these in one of our large print farms. So let's go ahead and talk about that for a moment. First of all, there is the size. This is small, not just because we wanted something fast, but because it has to fit on our build plates. At Slant3D, we have a build plate on our production machines of eight and a half by eight and a half inches. So even though this is smaller than that, you can't actually make one large enough for me. You can't make a standard size Nerf gun because this part has to be printed flat on its side. And there's no way to reorient it. There's nothing clever we can do to like put it at an angle or put it at the side or lay it around or flip it around so that it can take advantage of the larger volume of the printer. It has to lay flat on the build plate. So the max size you can get is actually only about 10 inches for this by laying it diagonally on the build plate. And that's kind of flummoxed by the handle. So the only option you have if you wanna make this stronger or meatier for larger handed people like adults or older kids who are like in their teens, you would actually make this a similar design, but instead of making it longer in order to make it stronger and larger, you would actually make it thicker. You would take this and continue to extrude it up so that you have more material inside of there and a beefier handle to get a hold of rather than this flat pack kind of a mechanism. By making it beefier, you don't really add that much more weight because the volumes of areas like here in the handle would still be hollow but you also get the advantage of being able to reinforce these springs even more so that you could potentially reduce the number of springs inside of here so you don't need as many flanges, which again kind of reduces print time and improves the cost of the product. And you can also do some extra stuff. Since this is basically a 2D object, if you make it thicker, you can have fewer fins and you can take those fins and warp them. You can add like a wave to them, a ripple, a wrinkle, so that they behave like they're thicker. And that gives you a stronger spring action on these types of devices to where you can get a better shot out of it. That is one option. So you can make this thicker, it's a handheld thing, and it looks almost like a speed gun sitting inside of your hand. That is the way to get a larger size object that is still short, but larger, tougher, and has better ergonomics for larger hands. The other issue that this has is the fact that when it's printing down on the build plate right here, you have a very complex first layer. All of these lines and outlines have to be hit. And that's generally not a huge issue, but you always want the first layer of a mass-produced FDM part to be as simple as possible. The ideal is a solid circle. That's the perfect first layer. But with this, we have a lot of stuff going on. We want to eliminate that. So if we were recommending design changes on this, we would basically have this whole side turned into a solid plate. No see-through whatsoever, just a single plate that actually then behaves like a raft. So you print that first layer that might be about a millimeter thick, and then you move up and these mechanisms, the compliant mechanism inside of here, is printed on top 
of that raft so that it breaks free and is able to move freely still, but you have that solid inner layer that radically simplifies the first layer and allows it to be ejectable, reliable, and actually even kind of improves the look from one side and people can't stick their finger through there if somebody's gonna fire the thing and get hit, especially if you're giving it to really small kids who are gonna finagle around with it. This doesn't have a lot of throw, so it's a pretty darn safe device, but you always wanna prevent people from being able to put their fingers through things that are moving. So the other thing that you we might have as recommendations for improvements on this are not really from manufacturing but from a product design standpoint. This is an excellent engineering demonstration. It works great. But if it was to be given out to folks as a finished product, you want it to look and feel better. A flat packed item is not a very good gun. So the things we would recommend on that is to round out the handles when people are grabbing it so it's not a flat shot. The other thing that we thought about having done is removing this back cover right here because it's really not necessary and it prevents you from really getting a good grab on this because it's containing the loop that you're trying to grab. If you remove this backside, it becomes very clear where you're supposed to grab and that this is a separate item to be used. And you don't need this as a backstop because this puller is stopped up here at the front. So you don't need the backstop also. This does give structure and rigidity to the old part, but again, if you're making it all thicker, that might not be necessary anymore. And there's actually other ways of getting around it to where you don't have something so obtrusive. Next, an improvement that is unique to 3D printing and people don't always consider is the bullet itself. Right now, this is a standard 3D printed chunk of plastic that you shove into there, load up, and fire out. But the bullet has a couple of issues, and the main is that it tumbles most of the time when it's thrown, and it turns over and over because it's a uniform cylinder. You never wanna shoot a uniform cylinder out of a projectile launcher that just knocks it out. So in order to improve that bullet, what you would do once you scale it all up is with the 3D printing model, you can actually have part of it hollow and part of it heavy. This is great because Nerf bullets normally, the Nerf darts that you play with, have a rubber tip and a foam back because the foam back is light enough to act as a stabilizer as the rubber tip is moving through the air. That's what you would wanna do with this 3D printed gun and bullet. You can make the bullet so that it prints hollow for a period of time and then goes to solid. That way you implicitly put in the heavy pointed tip and then have the lighter back end while still looking like a solid 3D printed cylinder. This is something that is unique to printing because no other process on the planet can create a dual density part with the same material. This is a really, really cool option that would allow you to make bullets really affordably. And since they're tall cylinders, they can be produced really affordably. There's something that can be knocked off and produced by the millions for really good economics. But there are a lot of other components around this, around the compliant mechanisms themselves that you can design. And actually, let's go ahead and just point to another video where we talk about hinges in general that are compliant mechanisms and how you can design them for your projects. Do comment down below if you would like to see us design an improved version of the Mark Rober Blaster, and we'll get that done in another video. Have a great day, everybody.